Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my Vermi Bag Mini, and if you were with me last time, you'll remember this isn't exactly the way we found it last time. For a while now, we've been running the system with no plastic coverings, so this plastic covering came on in the meantime, since the last time we checked in on it together. And I think the main reason was based on feedback that I was getting from you guys, the viewers, um, telling me that from the look of it, the material was perhaps a little bit too dry. So besides coming in here with the plastic covering to help the system hang on to whatever existing moisture it's got, I also came in with my squirt bottle. So I came in here thoroughly and I sprayed and I sprayed and I sprayed and I dampened everything in here quite thoroughly. And I tell you, that was only I think three or four days ago. And I don't remember all these little uh, sprouts being here. Actually, no, I think I did pull a bunch of them. I upended a bunch of them and I, uh, I guess these don't take very long to grow to a pretty substantial size. So we're kind of doing away with these little thingies that are trying to grow. And I guess once they're no longer an actively growing piece of vegetation, they're fair game for the worms to be utilized as food. So this will come into the system as a little supplement to the existing food that um, I've allocated to their feeding here today. Just a mix of different types of vegetables and fruits. A little bit of a cauliflower stem, a little bit of potato peels, a little bit of watermelon. Hopefully they're going to appreciate that. And for bedding, I've got a few napkins. I've got, I think, three fairly large sized napkins here. Nothing too out of the ordinary going on here, but one thing we're going to do is something that I've never tried before. And the main reason we're trying that is so that we can see if we can counteract What I'm interested in um, counteracting is the presence of flying insects. And you know, I'm not sure what we're seeing here. The last time we came in here to feed, I know that all we gave them was three plums. And those plums would have been located down the middle. One of the things that came up here when I removed that top covering of newspaper was this, the feeding zone indicator it was just stuck to it. Yeah, we could go back to using that again, but I'm starting to wonder if what we're seeing here is some form of mold or a fungus or something like that. Kind of seems that way. And there seems to be a, a good bit of it. At least over on that side where I found it. It's the sort of stuff that I'm assuming the worms will gladly eat. But I would hate to leave this system for an extended period of time and then come back only to be surprised by a crazy growth taking over the entire system. So I don't see any other signs of anything similar to that. Or is that what we're seeing over on this side too? A little bit of? Huh. I wonder if that could have something to do with how I covered up. I put that plastic on here in such a way that it was almost sticking to the walls of the bag definitely helping to lock in the moisture and I did really go kind of generous on the moisture that I sprayed in here so I wonder if it could have something to do with the abundant moisture that I added to the system I'm assuming at this point anybody watching is not going to feel that this material looks too dry anymore it certainly doesn't feel that way to me <laughs> and I'm sure the worms appreciate that too everywhere I go and I grab a handful of material it seems like there's worms in it everywhere which is kind of cool but um we're gonna try something I think I mentioned it earlier something I've not yet tried before I've got um, a technique or a method for dealing with the flying insects which is using my mosquito dunks much the way the manufacturer su suggests which is to drop some of this material into water and after it's had a chance to soak that water is what I apply to my systems but I figured here I was gonna go with an approach that I've seen used elsewhere on some other channels just to apply this stuff dry so I grabbed my little magic bullet blender and I ground up one of those little mosquito dunks cookies 
and I figured perhaps since we've seen so little progress in here with um, our attempts at eliminating the flying insect issues, perhaps we would see if we can get some results by applying this stuff in its concentrated dry form rather than creating a solution from it and see if that helps. So this system at one point had a whole bunch of gourd, a number of gourds thrown in here, and it, and it even had some pumpkin stems, many large pumpkin stems, many large gourds, most of which have shattered into little pieces. I believe what I was breaking apart over there a moment ago was either a chunk of gourd or possibly a chunk of um, pumpkin stem. But um, I think we've had a chance to look around the edges, but we've not gone down the middle. The middle is where we typically feed, so that's where we will hopefully encounter whatever's left of those plums. And if the only thing remaining of the plums is the seed, then I was going to extract the seeds. And I believe we're actually encountering one of the plums right here. And the seed is right here. I was holding it a moment ago in my hand. And there's still a good bit of the plum still hanging around. You know, after only nine days, it's not a very long interval between feedings, you know. But based partially on the feedback about the dryness, I definitely wanted to come back in here and do what I did off camera, which was to moisten the system considerably with my spray bottle. And then today's visit is geared mainly for giving me a certain peace of mind. Oh, that was interesting. We just emptied the gourd and it had a little bit of a worm party <laughs> going on down in there. Look at all those worms. Enjoying one another's company. Probably more along the lines of enjoying whatever it is that fell into the gourd. All right, I had to stop the camera there briefly. Well, the camera stopped on its own because it was out of space. <laughs> So I had to delete a little bit of footage to make room so that we can continue here. Normally when I grab a handful of material like this to play it back in fast motion, <laughs> there's a place for the worms to go. So I usually grab a handful of material along with the worms, but in this case there was nothing in my hands other than worms. So they had nowhere to go, but you could see they tried to get out of the bright lights but they didn't allow themselves to drop. So I think if we were to just hang on to them here again, they would somehow manage to get to the other side without dropping. And there they are. Interesting how they grab onto each other. I mean, I did drop a little bunch of them right there, but all right, let's, uh, let's back off. Let's leave them to be. Oh, look at that, a little bit more excitement going on down in that little hidey hole of the gourd. So. That makes it official as far as this gourd goes. It has broken. And it's not too surprising. Over the past few check-ins, it's been making noises. Every time I would handle it, it would start cracking and making these weird sounds. So how does this sound? If we manage to locate the other two plums and their seeds, we're going to place them inside the gourd. And that'll help us locate them later. And then I guess my main interest in doing that is so that we can remove the remove the seeds so here's another one and I guess for whatever reason this piece doesn't have as much worm action as the other one did and the third plum must be somewhere nearby they were right out there at the same level so I kinda thought it would be really obvious when we got in here and that I'd be able to locate the three plums or what was left of them possibly only the pit and I believe what I've got here is pit number three so let's just jam that into what remains of this gourd here and then the other part that still remains is this top piece that's going to be our little hidey hole for the plum pits so that we can extract them next time by then I'm sure that the uh, the fruit itself will have been consumed leaving only the pits and before we drop in today's feeding, let's excavate a little further just so we can get at the other slow composting item, the really huge pumpkin stem. 
holding up quite nicely mainly because it is so large in size so I think we've um, had our fun here disturbing the little wormies here's another pumpkin stem let's uh let's proceed to giving them their fair share of food and then we could leave them to be and get back to what they were doing and we're probably not going to have to add a great deal of moisture on this go around since I was so generous with it last time I could feel everything down in here is very very damp so I'm assuming that those pieces of frozen veggie matter that we're going to be dropping in here on top of these dry pieces of paper will be sufficient to dampen this dry paper so I had prepared by putting the squirt bottle over here next to me so that we could spray this thing down if we felt it was necessary but it does seem like I was sufficiently generous with the moisture last time we came in here so I think we'll simply proceed to putting in the old and new foods hopefully we've um, hopefully we've dug a hole large enough to fit it all look at that what a nice feeding I'm kind of going through all my systems at this point preparing for some time away so it is quite likely that it could be somewhere in the neighborhood of three weeks before I find myself back in this system so hopefully we're leaving them with sufficient stuff in terms of food and bedding and other things to be okay without us checking in on them and even though it's only been nine days it did seem like these guys were the next ones to get checked in on and I'll be checking in on all of my other systems in preparation for being away to make sure I feel confident in the way I'm leaving them um, confident in the fact that they'll probably be okay for a good couple weeks at least in my absence so the last few things we wanted to do here was give this stuff a try I wanted to sprinkle in some of this mosquito bits and this is my very very first time trying this applicator approach so I wasn't quite sure what to expect here and you know typically you're only applying this stuff in liquid form after it's had a chance to go into solution so I'm assuming that what I've added there is plenty I hope it's enough and what I'm really hoping for is to see no more flying insects in this system so let's go back on with the coverings much the way we found them when we first got in here it didn't help when this piece of paper kept getting pushed up by the little stuff popping up beneath it allowing for even further drying without it having even the minimum amount of coverage by being covered by newspaper so that didn't help either so I think it's going to help a great deal by us um, having this plastic covering going forward we'll, um, we'll definitely have a system that has significantly more moisture in it and as a result probably much happier worms <laughs> and now with the different way of applying the mosquito dunks Hopefully no more flying insects. Keeping my fingers crossed. All right, everyone, that's it for the check-in with the Burmy Bag Mini. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.